call to order the regular city council meeting of Monday, October 5th, 2015. If you would all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kathy, would you call a roll, please? Sure. Mayor Greer has been excused this evening, and we have Mayor Pro Tem Weed. Here. Council Members Brown. Here. Ekstrom. Here. Ketchmar. Here. Bates. Here. Sharaki. Here. And Frida. Here. We have a quorum. Uh, the next item on the agenda is, agenda is the approval of the minutes from the September 21st regular city council meeting the September 25th Special City Council meeting, and the September 23rd Public Works Committee meeting. Are there any corrections? Hearing none, could I have a motion? Councilman Bates. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Oh, uh, hold, hold on, and a second? Not yet. <laughs> Councilman Katchmar, thank you. Uh, go ahead, Ron. Make a motion we approve. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you kind of jumped ahead there. Well, you did. Uh, <laughs> September what happens 20... when you get a rookie up here? <laughs> I know. That's what you get for wearing the tie. Um, so, uh, make a motion we approve the uh, September 21st, 2015 regular city council meeting, the September 25th, 2015 special city council meeting, and the September 23rd, 2015 public works committee meeting. I second that. Thank you. There we got it. Uh, any comments? Could you call the roll, Kathy? Councilmember Bates. Aye. Councilmember Ketchmar. Aye. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Councilmember Frida. Aye. Councilmember Shiraki. Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Weed. Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Uh, the next item: uh, Are there any council members' announcements? <laughs> Councilman Bates. Yeah, we have a general government uh, meeting Wednesday, October 7th at 4 p.m. Anything else? Okay, item four is the adoption of the agenda and the cons consent agenda. Doug, could you review the consent agenda items? Uh, yes, the first item on the consent agenda is a temporary street closure. Uh, we reviewed this matter at the uh, September 23rd Public Works Committee, and this closure would be for Main Street between 3rd Street and 14th Street, and then the various side streets in that area. This would be on Saturday, December the 5th, from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m., and this is for the Chamber of Commerce annual Christmas parade, so it is getting that time of year. Uh, next item is to authorize the mayor's signature on a letter of support. Uh, again, we reviewed this at the September 23rd Public Works Committee. This letter is a letter of support for a grant application uh, that would be submitted by the Arkansas River Outfitters Association to the Colorado Tourism Office. And that grant, if it's, if it's received, would be for the purposes of promoting uh, the recreational use uh, of the Arkansas River, uh, certainly something that our community would benefit from. Uh, resolution number 17, 2015, this is to authorize the mayor's signature to an agreement uh, with the, the uh, State of Colorado Department of Transportation, CDOT. This agreement uh, would commit the city's uh, contribution of $74,043, which would be 20% of the total project cost. Uh, and that total project cost would be uh, $370,215. This project would be for the improvement of the 4th Street Bridge rehabilitation and uh, or the viaduct as we as we as we refer to it uh, so it would be the repairs of, of that uh, of that pro of that uh, bridge in the street it's anticipated that the construction would become would begin sometime in 2015 we do not know the specific time frame for that construction it would depend upon cdot giving us the notice to proceed so it's going to be depending upon their schedule but 2015 uh, or, 20 or 2016 30. sorry thank you um, and it would be de dependent upon their schedule. So, you know, we don't know for sure when that will get started, but sometime next year. Uh, resolution number 18 of 2015 is recommended again at the September 23rd Public Works Committee. 
Uh, this resolution would appoint a uh, city administrator, a city attorney, or designees, and the mayor and one or more council members to participate to represent the city in negotiations with the Canyon City and Royal Gorge Railroad. This is for the possible sale of the Santa Fe Depot. The railroad has requested um, that the city consider that sale to the railroad. We don't know if this will happen. It would certainly just give the city the opportunity to sit down, think about what uh, we would need from, from that kind of a sale. Does it make sense even for us to go ahead? And uh, it would give the, this committee then the opportunity to report back uh, to the city council if it's something that the council felt was appropriate to, to go ahead with. So it's, a, it's a, it really a resolution to start the negotiation process. Next item is resolution number 19, 2015. This is a very similar type of a, of a, of a uh, uh, step for the city council. Uh, it was recommended, reviewed and recommended at the September 23rd Public Works Committee. And this resolution, uh, if it's approved, would appoint the city administrator, city attorney, the de designees, and uh, the mayor and one or more council members to represent the city in negotiations for a possible lease uh, of the city-owned property within the Royal Gorge Park uh, to a possible owner of the Buckskin Joe property. This lease would really relate specifically to the small train that's up there on the Buckskin Joe property. That train goes out, crosses the Royal Gorge Park property to the turnaround and comes back. So they would need to be able to utilize uh, the Royal Gorge Park property to be able to operate that train and to also uh, consider the possible uh, future development of the Buckskin Joe property as part of that negotiation process. So again, uh, it doesn't mean that it would happen. It means that a committee would be set up to look into the possibility to report back to the city council, get input from the city council, and to see if it makes some uh, sense for the, that uh, step to go forward. Next item are the bids, bid number 14 of 15. This first one is to uh, remove sand uh, at the um, uh, water treatment uh, plant settling pond and this would be to M and B Pond and Lagoon Incorporated of Loveland, Colorado in an amount not to exceed $24,250. Uh, we reviewed this at the September 23rd Public Works Committee <clears throat> and again this is for the removal of the sandbar that typically accumulates over a period of time uh, that sandbar typically is removed about every seven years. We're at about that point when it needs to be removed. Uh, this vendor uh, was a sole uh, bidder from the five that were solicited, and these funds are uh, budgeted in the 2015 budget. Uh, bid number 35 of 15, uh, this is for improvements at the Royal Gorge Park. Uh, for the Park Department, this would be to let construction of Canyon City in the amount of $29,394. Uh, this was reviewed at the September 23rd Public Works Committee. Uh, this is for very, uh, various improvements at the picnic shelter, uh, 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 involving a couple of picnic shelters, revamping the picnic shelters and the restroom facility that's just been built up there. Uh, there were two bids that were solicited or received from those that were solicited, and this vendor was the low bidder. Uh, these funds, again, were included in the uh, 2015 budget. This was also part of the uh, insurance settlement related to the fire. So uh, those funds have been provided through insurance. A uh, list of bills for the last two-week payable period uh, as the last item on the consent agenda. Thank you, Doug. <clears throat> Are there any additions or corrections? Hearing, hearing none, could I get a motion? Councilman Bates. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> I make a recommendation we approve the uh, agenda and consent agenda as read. Second. Uh, second from Councilwoman Frieda. Is there any discussion of the motion? Kathy, would you call a roll, please? Councilmember Bates. Aye. Councilmember Frieda. Aye. Councilmember Shiraki. Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom. Aye. Councilmember Ketchmar. Aye. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Wheat. Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the administrator's report. Doug? Uh, a couple of items. Uh, first item is just a reminder uh, that next, um, 
meeting uh, for the city county city meeting it would be scheduled on Monday uh, October the 12th which is next Monday it would be noon here at the City Hall uh, we would for any council members that can make it if you can let Kathy know uh, we'll have a, some kind of a lunch for all the people that will attend and uh, so again noon on next Monday uh, next item that I had included is not so much uh, information for the City Council but really more for the for the general public that might be interested or watching on TV um, the city uh, has been in the process of reviewing its budget uh, for 2016 uh, that budget uh, was submitted to the City Council uh, before October 1st which is a requirement of our city charter and uh, that budget for anyone that is interested it, they can find it on the city's website which is www.canyoncity.org uh, uh, they can get it at the library they can get it at the city clerk's office they can get a copy at the finance department here at city hall if they would like uh, to get a copy of it for a review now just for everyone's information this is the initial initial budget proposal that has been submitted to council uh, the council will be reviewing this budget talking about it um, we plan on uh, uh, October the 23rd which is two weeks from now uh, to have a uh, budget hearing and so uh, at that or on the two weeks from now which will be the uh, what's at the 16th I guess it is would be the budget hearing and by the end of that week which would be the 23rd the City Council would be identifying any changes uh, that would be made to the budget and, and submitting those back to the staff for the staff to make uh, uh, final changes to the budget we hope that we can compile the final changes to the budget by November the 6th so shortly thereafter and on November the 6th then that final budget would be uh, brought back to the City Council for the final revisions to be made and on November the 16th the City Council would then adopt that final budget we'd have first reading of the appropriations ordinance on December the 7th uh, second reading of the appropriations ordinance and setting the mill levy so that's kind of the process for going forward and so that everybody kind of understands this budget uh, has been something that actually the City Council really kind of started the ball rolling on going back really as far as February this year when the City Council uh, held a retreat they kind of talked about the direction for the next several years what they would like to uh, uh, try to accomplish the policies that they've they've tried to set forward uh, they set forward a series of policies for the 2016 budget and basically those were uh, really to try to continue with uh, uh, you know effective delivery of services to our community the, the services that we're providing to continue to be consistent and be effective in the way we're providing those services to the community keeping our fees and charges at current levels uh, in in recent years the City Council has been very concerned about uh, fees and charges that are being paid uh, for, by citizens for services being provided uh, water charges have been held at, at a flat level until last year we had to make one adjustment but again this year we're going to keep all those fees and charges at the at the direction of the council at their current level so there would be no increases in that regard um, council has asked us to uh, keep staffing uh, continue to try to keep it at, at, at current levels uh, as best we can to look for efficiencies within staffing uh, and the way we use money wherever we can uh, to strive to put more money into capital projects and I'll kind of talk about that in just a second but over the years I think going back uh, for several years the City Council has directed staff to try to get more money into capital projects that are things that will improve this community whether that's roads we know we've heard the issues about our roads but try to get money into our roads as best we can try to get money into projects that will improve our community for the future uh, so we've been trying to do that and we've we've increased the amount of money going into projects for next year uh, get the most out of our equipment so as, as opposed to you know buying a piece of equipment to try to get the most that we possibly can have out, out of our equipment so we're not sp spending money needlessly and that we can continue to uh, get that money into other areas where we really need it for community improvements and so on uh, remain competitive in the marketplace we probably have all heard uh, about some of the issues uh, we in our police department in particular some concerns about pay there 
Uh, we have completed the salary survey. All those uh, recommendations out of that salary survey have been included into our budget, so uh, we can make sure that our, our, um, our, our staff is paid according to sort of our competition in the market, and uh, that has been accomplished. Um, <clears throat> provide, we want to provide, according to the council's direction, uh, responsible maintenance of our infrastructure. Uh, we want to try to keep uh, 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 maintaining our infrastructure as best as we possibly can. We know that the uh, streets, you know, we've heard this discussion. Uh, we have about $400,000 that every year we've been putting into the maintenance of our streets. Uh, this year, we're going to be able to put a little bit more than that into our streets. But again, it's still not kind of, it's still not enough really to take care of the streets at the level of maintenance that we need to be doing. So that's part of the, the ballot question that the city council has set forth to the voters in November. But we're trying to put as much money into that maintenance as we possibly can, whether it's our streets, our infrastructure, our parks, our buildings, whatever it may be. Uh, to ensure that our city facilities are being operated as efficiently as possible. Again, the city council has directed us to eliminate redundancies, to try to, to make sure that these buildings are operated efficiently so we're not wasting money on the operations of our, of our facilities. Uh, a, a big one that's important in our community, the, direct, the council directed us to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to keep our community safe, uh, continue to uh, uh, move forward with what we call community policing policies, which is a policy to sort of bring our, our police department into, into an alignment with our, our community so that we are on the same page and we're not having many of the problems that you hear in other communities around the country. Uh, we want to be able to promote appropriate growth and reinvestment in our community, something that the council has felt is very important is that we, we know that in order to get the revenues that we need to be able to invest into our streets in the future, we have to grow the revenue streams that we have available to us. And the way we have to do that is, is to try to encourage people to reinvest into our community and to try to, and by doing that, bring businesses here so that people will shop here, spend money here, and as they do that, our sales tax revenue will grow, and as that revenue grows, it can go into our streets and so on. So that has been a, a directive of the council, and there have been a number of things that the council has kind of directed to put into this budget for 2016 to try to help accomplish that objective and then to promote uh, uh, sound uh, financial management uh, of all of our financial resources um, so that we have a, uh, a good reserve maintained in all of our funds so that it's sort of that rainy day budget that we all know in our personal budgets, city has one of those too, so that if something should happen, we have money to be able to, to, uh, to take care of whatever that may be. Uh, we also have that fund so that when people look at the health, the financial health of our community, that reflects very well upon our community. We have very little debt uh, in the city budget, and so uh, that is a, certainly a plus. So those are the things that the city council has directed. Uh, we have put uh, a number of information uh, in, this, in this packet here. People can read it. You can look at the budget online. But again, we've, str we've uh, worked very hard, I think, to try to put more money uh, into our capital outlays. If you go back and take a look at the capital outlays, in 2012, 6%, 6.7% of our budget was going into capital outlays at that time. Over time, based on the direction of the city council, we've been able to push that number up to just over 18%. So when you figure that the, the amount of money that goes into operating our community for personnel, for uh, insurance, and all those kinds of things that it takes to operate the city, uh, we've been able to sort of grow the amount that's going into uh, 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 community improvements, if you will. So again, I would encourage uh, everyone, if they, if they can, to try to take a look at, at the budget, uh, those sources that I identified. Uh, hopefully, uh, people will take a little bit of time uh, to try to understand it, understand uh, you know, what it takes to operate this city. Uh, hopefully, they'll take the time to uh, understand this ballot question that has been proposed. Uh, by the city council. So uh, that's all I wanted to, to do. And if city council wants to offer any comments on that, great. And otherwise, that's the end of my report for tonight. Any comments? Okay. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing for an application for a, <coughs> excuse me, a special event liquor permit for the Canyon City Elks on October 17th open the public hearing and ask for a report from the clerk.
Mayor Pro Tem Weed and members of council. Uh, <coughs> this is Tony McCoy representing the local Elks Lodge 610 who's applied to this council for two separate events. We've separated them out just to make sure that we have the right public hearing. If there's any uh, people that uh, are opposed to either of them. They, are, they have two separate chances to do that. That's why they're on the agenda for two separate items. So this event here is scheduled for Saturday, October 17th. The public hearing, notice of this public hearing was given by posting the premises. Uh, the event will be from 4 p.m. until midnight and will be a dinner and dance in celebration of the sweetest day. Right, Tony? Yes, ma'am. Uh, they have identified that they will carefully check IDs at the door and those of legal drinking age will be given a wristband to so indicate. The club has had several events in the past with no resulting concerns. Many representatives from this organization have also attended the training that's been provided uh, to them in the past. Upon review of the application, it's been determined that the appropriate fee has been submitted with the application. The diagram of the premises meets the requirements and the corporation is in good standing with the Secretary of State's office. So with that, I'd ask that if you have any questions of Mr. McCoy to go have them now to go ahead and do so. Councilman Bates. Hi, Tony. Hi. I think you've heard these before, so. <laughs> Once or twice. Yeah. Are you familiar with the Colorado Liquor Code? Yes, I am. Is there a copy of the Liquor Code on file with your organization? Sure. How many volunteers do you plan on having for this event? Six to eight. How will they be trained in the Liquor Code and Liquor Laws? They are trained. Okay. Are you fully aware that you are responsible for compliance with the Colorado Liquor Code and any violations of this code may be held against you and your organization, as well as future licensings? Yes, sir. Okay. You want to give a little bit of a... Well, I suppose most of you have seen stuff going around town about the sweetest day, but the only problem I have with it, that's my birthday. So they're really <laughs> screwing my birthday up. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, Anyway, it's a, it's a good thing that's happening for the city, I think, and we hope we see that it might follow on through later on and, and, uh, and see what happens with it. You know, it's something new and something kind of interesting happening, so let's go out and see what we can do to, to improve it. Thank you, Tony. I don't have more questions. Are there any further comments or questions? Staff report? Oh, staff yes. report. I just didn't change the date of the staff report. My fault. Oh, so it, 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 it's a holdover from It's a May holdover. Yeah, it's a, it's oh, okay. a copy and paste thing. So, no, I didn't do a staff report in May. It's actually staff report for today. <laughs> the last time the Elks did it was in May. <clears throat> uh, are there any comments from the audience? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion. <coughs> Councilman Bates. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I make a rec recommendation. We approve the application for a special uh, event liquor permit to, uh, to the uh, Elks uh, Lodge 610 on October 17th. Second. Second from Councilwoman Frieda. Any discussion on the motion? Could you call the roll, please? Councilmember Bates. Aye. Councilmember Frieda. Councilmember Brown? Aye. Councilmember Ekstrom? Aye. Councilmember Shiraki? Aye. Councilmember Ketchmar? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Weed? Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. The next item on the agenda is a public hearing for the application for a special event liquor permit for the Canyon City Elks on November 17th. I'll open the public hearing and ask for a report from the city clerk. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem and members of council, once again, not unlike the previous report, this is Tony McCoy representing the Elks uh, for an event that is November 17th. Also, this notice of public hearing was posted alongside the other one uh, on the premises. This event will be from 4 until midnight and will include a dinner and fundraiser for the Orchard of Hope. They have identified that they will also check IDs at the door for this event and those of legal drinking age will be given a wristband also to indicate. 
uh, as with the last report, we have had no uh, results uh, concerning the, this club for any of their uh, similar events in the past. And they have also been coming to the city's training for quite some time, many, many years. So with that, uh, this review of this application, uh, fees have been submitted. They're using this diagram of the same premises and the corporation is also in good standing with the state. So ditto, I guess, right? Only the change of the date and the organization. Are there any questions from council? Councilman Ekstrom. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. All right, same questions, you ready? <laughs> okay. Um, are you familiar with the Colorado Liquor Code and is there a copy on file with your organization? Okay. Um, how many volunteers are you going to have? Well, probably assisting them. They're going to have some people, but we'll have another six or eight of, of our Elks members there to assist them. And are they trained in the Colorado Liquor Code? Thank you. And finally, are you fully aware that you are responsible for compliance with the Colorado Liquor Code and any violations of this code may be held against you and or your organization as well as for future licensing? Thank you very much. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this event? Oh, I, I really don't know a lot about it other than the Orchard of Hope's doing a lot of work around. And uh, okay. so we're letting them come into our facilities and, uh, and help them help the community. All right. Uh, and, uh, Thank you. Any other um, comments from council? Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I have one question. Tony, uh, this is the first time I heard that you were going to use Orchard of Hope volunteers for the liquor portion. Well, is that correct or is that, or are they just gonna just do- Just the part of it with dinner? the bands for identification for the people that's gonna be there and stuff. Otherwise we'll be controlling the stuff for the, for the liquor. And Orchard of Hope, none of their volunteer, none of those volunteers have come to training. No. So, if we need to do something before that, let's get them in and, and okay. let's do a quick uh, okay. nonprofit. Okay. No other uh, comments from council. Any comments from the audience? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and request the motion. Sure, I'll make a motion uh, that we approve the application for a special event permit uh, for the BPOE, Elks Lodge number 610 on November 17th. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Call the roll, please. Councilmember Ketchmar? Aye. Oh, sorry, Councilmember Ekstrom, sorry. <laughs> Aye. Councilmember Ketchmar? Aye. Councilmember Bates? Councilmember Frieda. Aye. Councilmember Shiraki. Aye. Councilmember Brown. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Wheat. Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. The next item on the agenda is public hearing for Public Improvement District 2014-01. I will open the public hearing and ask for a report from Kathy. This will be a brief report on my behalf just to let you know we're at the process of uh, public notification of the property owners. Uh, uh, since the project has been complete, the actual costs have been determined. Notice was given by publishing in the newspaper both on September 11th and the 18th and with a direct mailing to the property owners on September 14th, uh, advising them of this public hearing and the amounts uh, assessed to their property. And no objections have been received uh, as of today. Uh, just a background on this, uh, when the petitions were done, there was 68% approval, and with the costs that came in, they came in 1.66% less than the estimated amount. So I think kudos go out to the engineering department and the contractor for that. So uh, other than that, um, we're here to see if there's any public uh, comments from pr uh, property owners and such from that. Oh, are there, are there any comments from the audience? Okay, are there any questions from council members? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing and take us to the next item, which is ordinance number 11, series of 2015, setting final assessments. I'll need three to introduce. Councilman Ekstrom, Councilwoman Frieda, Councilman Kachmar. Clerk, would you read by title, please? This is a bill for ordinance number 11, series of 2015, an ordinance approving the total cost of improvements in public improvement district 2014 01 
in the City of Canyon City, Colorado, <coughs> approving and confirming the apportionment of said total cost among the several specially benefited lots and parcel in said district, assessing the appropriate share of said total cost against each such lot and parcel, prescribing the manner for which payment and collection of all such assessments and declaring an emergency. Thank you. Uh, could I get a motion? Councilman Ekstrom. Yes, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I make a motion uh, to approve ordinance number 11, series of 2015. Is there any discussion of the motion? I do have a real brief comment. I would like to uh, commend the city staff in particular for actually making this or uh, assisting making this project happen. Uh, it had originally been a standalone project and it was cost prohibitive for the residents of that street and city staff worked uh, to coordinate this with the improvements of the Skyline Drive Hogbacks uh, exit area and that brought the cost down to where the citizens were able to make this happen. And if you've been on that street, it's a remarkable improvement. So uh, congratulations and commendations to staff on that one. Uh, there being no further discussion, would you call the roll, please? Council Member Ekstrom? Aye. Council Member Frieda? Aye. Council Member Brown? Aye. Council Member Bates? Aye. Council Member Shiraki? Aye. Council Member Ketchmar? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Week. Aye. Approved by unanimous vote. And the last item on the agenda is the citizen's request to speak. Uh, do we have any requests? We had received one and he withdrew before the meeting. So no, we have received none. Okay. In that case, we are adjourned. <laughs>